let me ask you a question. Are you ready? Are you ready for Happy Hour with the Lincoln? We are now on episode number 64. And let me give the official cheers to all my good trading friends out there. In fact, how about a cheers to just all my friends? Even if you don't trade, I don't care. Thanks for watching this video. As always, if you guys have questions related to the stock market that you would like for me to feature on some of these upcoming episodes, feel free to send them over here to support at thelinkenlist.com. And also, if you're kind of struggling with your trading or you're trying to go to the next level or you're looking for a professional mentorship, be sure to trade with us live. Every day the market's open, we trade live. I say it every week. Right here's the link posted here somewhere. Just click on it and you can start trading with us live. Now, what we're going to talk about is something along the lines of what we've seen today. Got quite a few questions in relation to this sudden market behavior. We had this really, really bullish market, and all of a sudden, as soon as the holiday was over, got some heavy selling. So a lot of people want to know what it's all about, and we're going to do it. So here's the question. How come the market reverses so fast? There was a sell-off in July, then we immediately see new highs. The market sells off in August, then a week later, it makes a new high. Last week, we were at all-time highs, and now this week was all selling. Why is it like that? Also, some days the Dow is up, but the S&P is down. Are they supposed to run in unison? I'm confused about the sudden changes. Well, be confused no more. Allow me to ease your mind and comfort you in these times of despair and indecision. Anyway, let me try to just kind of go back and clarify a few things out of the very beginning part of this email. The thing I want to talk about here is that was not a sell-off in July or August. Unless you've traded through the credit crisis or the dot-coms, I'm afraid you just don't know what a sell-off really is. That was just sort of a light volume pullback in an otherwise very healthy bull market. And trust me, there is a difference and most of you will one day figure that out. One of the misconceptions that traders and investors have is they think that stocks go up or stocks go down. When in fact, and the same thing with the market, Stocks go up and they go down, okay? So it would be you know, common to see stocks all the time move like this. Even if the longer term trend on the stock is up for several months, you'll still see intraday moves that go up and they go down and they go back and they go forth and so on. You'll have all these little micro moves in this longer upturn trend or maybe the stocks in the downward trend, who knows? But you'll see these things. So remember, stocks go up and they go down. Now, the next question here is, why are we starting to see this? Why are we starting to see this type of behavior where these instant sell-offs, these erratic changes in market behavior? Well, it's not so erratic when you think about it. One of the small things, just the very basic things that you learn when you first start trading that everyone needs to know, which is so easy to overlook sometimes, is just the basic accumulation and distribution cycle. Now what this is, is that stocks go under accumulation at certain periods throughout the year, then they go through a distribution phase. Now I don't give a damn what that stock is. It could be Apple, the, you know, the, the biggest market cap in the world. It could be your favorite stock that you love so much that you're married to. It does not matter. It will go through an accumulation cycle and it will eventually go through a distribution cycle where nobody wants it. This is just how the market works. Now, one of the reasons it works like that is because for you and I, and I'm assuming that the people that are watching this are not multi-trillionaires or you know, head senior officers at Goldman Sachs or Merrill Lynch. So the shares that we buy in a company isn't gonna do a damn thing to the share price. You know, you got Amazon trading 10 million shares sometimes in a day at $1,900 to $2,000 a share, whatever it trades at sometimes. You know, I, I'm pretty well off, but I'm not gonna do anything with my money that's gonna move that stock. So what happens is that stock will go through an accumulation period. Now this is the time whether they have, it could be for a number of reasons. Maybe there has just been good news and good earnings and there's just positive outlook and a lot of hedge funds, a lot of institutions, a lot of investors, the herd themselves, are pouring money into this and accumulating a position. We kind of talked about this a little bit before in last week's thing when we talked about the difference between a trader and an investor. One of the things that we don't want to do when we're trading for money or we're trying to maximize our trading results is we don't want to have dead money. Now, you always see people on Twitter. Let me explain what I'm saying. 
You always see people on Twitter, stock twits or whatever it is, talking about if you would have invested in this, you would have such and such. So it's always saying, like, if you had... You would have invested $10,000 in Amazon in the year of 2001. And you would have held today, you would have $10 million. You're like, oh, wow, I should have held, right? But I'm going to post up an Amazon chart here, and I want you to look at it. And you're going to see that for much of the time, over that, you know, 20-year period, 18-year period of time, that many times, for very long periods of time, Amazon was just dead money. That means your money was sitting there rotting while other stuff was going up and up and up or down if you're a short seller. It was just sitting there. It was just dead money. It wasn't until later on there in the chart you start to see that accumulation cycle for that stock. So why does this matter to you? Well, when you're trading or you're investing, whatever your method is, you want to be in the stocks that are under accumulation. That's where you want to be. If you're longing, you're buying stocks, you want to have stocks go up, you want to be where the money is, following that money trail where institutions, hedge funds, whatever you want to call them, they're pouring money into a stock. Now, a lot of times you'll see this after earnings where stocks will make these runs and they'll continue to run up and they'll continue to run up. That's a stock that's under accumulation. That means the street wants it, the investors want it, Everybody else is on board, the herd mentality. Everybody's following that. They're sniffing out the money. You follow the money, whether you want to call it smart money, dumb money, it doesn't make a difference. Now, at some point, what the market will always do, and when I'm saying stocks, the market does this itself too. It has this ability to drive prices high enough to make people uninterested. Then it also has the ability to drive prices low enough to make people interested again. So at some point, and you're looking at maybe I'll, you're looking at a chart, that chart of Amazon. Maybe I'll post a chart of Apple. Great companies, yes, I get it. Making money, yes, I get it. But at some point, these prices get so inflated, and so many people have poured money into it that it becomes unattractive. The price just becomes too high over a too short period of time, and it's only natural that people that have been in that trade start to take profits. They're up a lot of money. I mean, that's what we're in the business for. Some people hold forever, but for most of us that trade or we're shorter term traded, we're in this for profit. So when a stock goes up a lot, we like to take profits along the way. So at some point it gets so inflated that it's just natural, whether it's the market or it's a stock, that people, investors, traders, institutions take the profits and they start to sell the stock. And that selling starts to accelerate. You know, as the stock goes down, okay, I'm going to sell it. Then this person sells it. Then an institution sells it. And it just goes on down and down and down and down and down. And you often see that's the distribution cycle, that the stock has gone up. And then now it has gone down in its distribution. Now, for a trader, that can be on a shorter time frame. Sometimes that's in little micro time frames of five minutes to 15 minutes to one hour. For investors, it could be days, months, weeks, years of, of, of time. But the point I'm trying to make is the best way that you're going to get results is to follow that money. Because we always say price is important, and it is. But as the saying goes, it's better to overpay for a good stock than to underpay for a shitty stock, okay? Same way with the market. So when it's under accumulation and you have buyers, the price sometimes is irrelevant. Of course, you want to get the best price. It does matter. But if the stock is being accumulated or the market is being accumulated, then you need to be a buyer of that. You need to be in that. Now, there'll be stocks within that. Like I said, the market's going up every day. There'll be stocks that are going down every day. They're in a distribution cycle. So what we kind of saw here to, to kind of drive this point home is tech has been a big leader throughout the summer. So when you're looking out here and this other question says, someday the Dow is up and then the S&P is down, okay? Well, one of the things when you have that, it, they don't have to run in unison. One of the things that's been a hindrance to Dow component stocks is a lot of those are directly related to tariffs. Tariffs hurt most of those companies, not all, but most of those companies are more vulnerable than say a Netflix, okay? Netflix would be less vulnerable than maybe Boeing. So there's a lot of money being pulled out of those Dow component stocks and moved over. So remember that once money pulls out of somewhere, it doesn't go in, into a drawer like this, you know, they put it under a mattress. 
that money gets rotated into something else. So that money comes out of Dow component stocks and it moves into Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Facebook, into tech. And you'll see the surge in the, in the NASDAQ. And you'll start to see that accumulation like Apple, a massive run after earnings. Amazon, massive run after earnings. And these stocks get accumulated. Well, then when tariffs start to get cleaned up or, or those stocks have been sold off, like a Boeing, for example, once they've been sold off enough or there's been enough da technical damage to them and they've gotten attractive again, then those investors, hedge funds, institutions, larger you know, institutions will pull that money out of tech and put it back where it came from. And they'll just continue to do that cycle. And that cycle moves around the entire year. So techs will be hot this time. Biotechs will have it around. You got marijuana stocks, for example, right now, flying through the roof. And it doesn't matter whether you think that company, that stock deserves this, that it's justified. It just, it's just the way that it is, man. That's, you, you don't make the rules. I don't make the rules. The only thing that we can do is follow that money. So one of the things that you're seeing right now is just inflated prices in stocks. And you've got tariff news coming over top of that. And you just got done with all-time highs in a really bullish summer. So it's natural to begin the next quarter with selling. I mean, it's just natural. Just get sell some of those positions, book those quarter profits, make it look good on the statements for your investors. And then when these things retrace, sell off, that's what I mean by retrace, then they'll buy them back. And that's what you're trying to do. So that's one of the reasons why you see it. The point of this whole episode today was to talk about how important it is for you guys that are trading to be, when we say trade the right stocks, to be in the right names, to be where the money is. Because where the money, you have volume. And when you have volume, you have every single thing you need as a trader. You have ranges, you have wild moves, you have shares available for shorting. You have everything that you need rather than trading some dumpster stock that's just sitting there. And again, it doesn't mean it's a piece of crap. You know, it may be in three months, we're not even going to be trading Apple anymore because it's not worth a damn because it's not, I wouldn't say the company's not worth a damn. I'm just saying that there's no movement in it right now. Nobody's buying it. It's just sitting there. It's just dead money again. Look at that Amazon. So when you're trying to maximize your returns, you want to be where the money is. I think I made that clear. So anyway, guys, that's what that's that's it. I'm gonna leave it right there. First, I'm gonna drink this. But in a recap, first of all, this is not a sell-off. I'm not gonna be one to sit here and try to tell you if, when, what year, what day we're gonna have a sell-off. I have absolutely no idea. We got a little ways to go before we can really start talking about selling off. I think we got to get underneath the 200 moving average in the markets before we can really start talking about entering bear market territory. And even in bear market territory, there's going to be a sector where money goes to. Remember, money just doesn't sit on the sidelines like that. So even when the market's down, these institutions have to buy stuff. So they're going to be looking for safe plays, hedges. That's sometimes why you see the market go down. You see gold go up. There's always a trail. So if you want to be very successful at this, follow the cycle of money. Just follow that trail. Follow the accumulation cycle. The stuff that's sitting on the side, don't worry about it. Don't try to be a hero. Don't try to outthink the market and go, well, I see this company doing really good next year. Well, then buy the damn thing next year. Take your money now and invest it in something that's good right now. And then buy that beautiful company next year. So I hope that kind of makes sense to everyone as always. If you need help. You know where I'm at. I want to thank you for watching this week's happy hour. Until next week, trade well and cheers.